So this video is a walkthrough of the experiment that we're going to do uh, today or tomorrow dealing with uh, extracting chlorophyll from spinach. So we're going to need a couple of things, uh, some early mar flask, 125 milliliter early mar, early mar flask, you need a 250 mil beaker, uh, pipette which will be supplied to you, uh, spinach, uh, and some acetone which will also be supplied and you're going to need a TLC plate uh, at the end of the experiment because we're going to do thin layer chromatography alright so first thing we have to do is grind up the spinach and a mortar and pestle so we take the spinach we add it to a mortar and pestle add acetone to it and just grind it up uh, I'm going to take care of this part and then I'll give you uh, some of the acetone layer for step two so step two would just be to add some of the spinach extract, the acetone extract, into a clean beaker or a clean Erlenmeyer flask, preferably a, a 250 ml beaker or a 125 Erlenmeyer flask, it doesn't matter. All right, so once we add the spinach uh, extract here, the acetone layer, we're going to take this layer and actually add uh, some hexane to it. Right. When we get to this step, it's going to actually produce two layers, and those two layers will actually be acetone on the bottom and hexane on the top. If you look here, the density of hexane is 0.659, the density of acetone is 0.791. So that hexane layer will sit on top of the acetone layer because they're immiscible. What that means is that they don't mix. And uh, if you have been paying attention in lecture, all right, acetone is polar, hexane is nonpolar. Uh, both of them are organic, and so they don't mix. But chlorophyll, which is in this acetone layer, actually will mix with hexane. So you add the hexane layer, you swirl, and then that top layer is also going to contain your chlorophyll that you're able to pull from the acetone layer. This is called an extraction. All right, chlorophyll itself is nonpolar, and so it's going to be soluble in hexane because like dissolves like, right? So hexane is nonpolar, so is chlorophyll. All right. Next step after swirling and letting the layer separate is to actually pipette off the hexane chlorophyll layer. So you pipette it off here, all right, and into a clean beaker or a clean Erlenmeyer, you take the same pipette and you actually add it to this beaker. All right, so now you have your chlorophyll layer. The next step is going to be to do thin layer chromatography. So let me give you a little, a quick run through about what TLC is. Thin layer chromatography is a way to separate uh, compounds based on their polarity. Right, the TLC plate has a silica gel coating on the front part of it. That silica gel is uh, very polar, and so polar groups will stick to the TLC plate whereas nonpolar groups will move up the TLC plate pretty quickly. All right, so the way that you prepare your TLC plate, it'll be pre-cut so you don't have to cut it. Uh, you get a TLC plate, you get a capillary. The capillary is going to be used to spot uh, your compound onto the TLC plate. Uh, you want to put a one centimeter line here at the bottom of the plate, and then you want to place your spot just above that line and then you'll have some instructions in your uh, lab handout to tell you how to spot this the best way to do it is just to press the uh, capillary down uh, onto the spot and then blow as you're pressing to evaporate the solvent but we'll talk about that when we get into the lab um, so you want your the hexane layer you want that to be spotted here all right you want your spot to be above the line and not below the line because you don't want the solvent um, that's going to be in your development chamber to dissolve your spot. It'll really uh, mess your TLC experiment up. Okay, so let's look at what happens. So here's my compound. Now I have a what, what's called a developing chamber. It's really just a beaker and a watch glass and then some solvent as your mobile phase. So when you're doing TLC, you need a mobile phase and you need a stationary phase. The mobile phase are the solvent vapors. The stationary phase is the silica gel. And so at the bottom of your developing chamber, you're going to add 
some 70 30 hexanes acetone that's already going to be made up all right so what happens here is this the vault the solvent vapors move uh, naturally they're lighter than air so they're moving up and as they move up they pull your compound up the plate right again the very non-polar compounds are um, move up the plate quickly the polar compounds stick to the plate and they don't move as quickly and so you're going to have to calculate an RF value which is a retardation factor and it's very simple it's just the distance that the spot moved and then you compare that to the distance that the solvent moves so this as these spots are traveling up the plate when the solvent reaches about one centimeter from the top of the plate you'll take the plate out and then draw a pencil line here and then you can calculate your RF so the RF is the distance that the spot moved from where you spotted it so from here to here and then the distance from that the solvent travels so from here to here as always if you have any questions you can tweet you can email or you can drop by my office peace